All right, back in this scene again. Milking it a bit, to be honest, aren't I? So what I wanted to talk about today was what space your stuff should be in when you animate. I think a lot of people will put pressure on themselves to really make sure that they plan ahead and choose exactly the right space, make sure everything is super clean in the graph editor from the very start in blocking. But I don't necessarily think that that is the one solution. So this is personally how I work. Basically, I don't worry too much about what space things are in when I'm blocking. I try and treat stuff quite 2D. I just want to make sure that I'm making posing as easy as I can for myself. So if I've got things in spaces which don't make posing easy, I'll put them in a space which do. Now this might not make splining easy, but we can switch that later. So let's take a look at some of the spaces that I have in this blocking of the shot. So you'll notice that I am working in IK. I don't always work in IK. I will say that some examples of when I like to use FK is when the arm is a bit more reactive. But if she's doing a lot of specific movements, like here, for example, I have a clap, it's going to be easier for me to track the arc of the hands and then worry about the arm later, get that all feeling connected, rather than having to worry too much about the upper arm and then how that feeds into the lower arm to then feed into the hand. I find personally that IK is a lot easier to pose with, especially if you have it following the torso. This is going to be super easy to pose if you wanted. You could also have it just following the hips and that would work just fine too. And then this can move independently. That could work for what you're posing and the section that you're posing just fine too. But personally, for most of the stuff where, and we're not using IK arms in the traditional way that IK arms are very useful, such as here where she's using those hands to kind of anchor herself and we don't want them moving too much. Now here, if I wanted to go super extra, I could have the hands in headspace. But I haven't chosen to do that because to be honest, switching that space for the sake of one or two keys in my blocking isn't really going to save me that much time. It's not a case of having a rule that, oh, it needs to be in a way that makes blocking as efficient as possible. It just needs to make your process of posing as quick as possible. So if you're going to be interrupting the flow of you posing by thinking, thinking, oh, I should have a space switch here to make this one small motion that I'm doing more efficient to animate, then I think that's counterintuitive. You're better off spending that time just getting it working and it should be fine. I think another thing I have here is a locked down elbow, just because that was giving me some trouble, especially with the subtle breathing stuff. But then when we get to here, the elbow is no longer locked down. One thing I do really like to do is to have the elbow control be in hand space. Now I don't have that on this rig and it wasn't worth my time to set up when I was blocking. I think in hindsight, I could have been more efficient here by setting this up during my blocking. Here's a way we can set up that elbow being in hand space, even if the rig doesn't have a switch for that. Grab the hand and we'll grab the group that this pole vector is in and parent that. So now when we move this, it moves the pole vector automatically, but we still have control over this. So what this is going to do is it's going to make it really easy for us to pose this a lot quicker. You can see that as we rotate it, the flow through the arm kind of stays and you can very quickly pose in to do a sort of overlapping arm just by using rotations and get a lot of that information in there with not too many tweaks. This is probably my preferred way of setting up the arms for the blocking parts. I guess the other things to mention, I don't mind animating this hip control on its own, but also using this. This depends on whether I'm happy with the upper body shape and just want to maybe tweak this slightly. But then this is very helpful for getting an overall pose. I like to have the head in world orient space. So it still follows the chest and body, but the rotation is locked. If your head is rotating an awful lot, you're going to lose the impression of your character being focused on something. You want to keep the rotation oriented to the world. The only other thing I think I changed in this animation was when she jumps, I have the feet in the space as well. This just makes it very easy to tweak this pose a lot easier than if the feet are locked. But of course, all of these spaces that I've used in my blocking aren't necessarily what I'm going to use in my spline pass. So I've already done an another video talking about 
what I do with the spine. So just to go over that again, I get rid of any animation from here, put it onto this main control. I lock down the chest after doing a first pass of translation on the hip control, just to get that locked down and not being ruined when I tweak the rotation of this. I like to put the hands in world space. So I'll just grab this Animbot tool and we don't want it snapping to hip for any of them. So I'll turn that off. A lot of them will have a space switch attribute, but this one has different attributes for every space. So I believe the one we want is snap to main. So we'll turn that on for all keys. And we'll also turn snap to torso off for all keys. That's going to be a world space. I just find world space the easiest way of cleaning things up just because your curves are making sense in the graph editor. Up means up, down, down means down, side to side means side to side. In this case, it doesn't. So, and this is because of the way that the T pose is on the rig. I believe we have more of an A pose on the default rig. This can give us some issues when we spline. Translate Y will kind of do a diagonal thing rather than straight up and down that we want. So we can just go in Animbot and set this to either world or camera space. Camera space is quite nice. And then this should all make sense in the graph editor. Up is up, X is side to side. Very nice. So I'll do that for the other hand as well. Also at this point, if I had my arm, my elbow pole vector parented or in hand space, I'd probably put this in main space, which it is right now. Headspace I usually have already set up in the right orientation, so don't need to change that. And then we'll put the feet into world space as well. I think one more thing I'd like to mention as well is that I'm not afraid to animate the world control. We have some animation here parented onto the boat. If I wanted to make some changes very quickly and I didn't have things set up very fast, then I'd be happy to grab this control and just move it around. So if I just wanted to tweak this arc a little. So we can see here that this is animated. So what I find very useful is selecting all of these controls that are in world space. Even if the rotation or just the translation is in world space, I'll select them. Doesn't really do any harm to select extra things. So just to be safe, I'll select the feet, all of the pole vectors for the elbows and knees, the main control, chest if it's in world space, and head control. And maybe the eye control if you have that in world space as well. I'll just do a quick selection set. And then I want to copy X form world space playback range. So this copies the position of all of those controls that I've selected. It's essentially like baking the information onto a locator, but it just stores it in Animbot instead. And then I want to go through and get rid of any animation I have, fully delete this. If we want to as well, we can reposition our control so that we have it more oriented to camera. This isn't perfect because we have some camera animation going on, some boat animation, so it's not going to be absolutely 100% aligned to the camera, but this is going to be a lot more helpful for us. Now this obviously breaks the animation completely, but we have baked all of the world's space controls onto this. So we can go ahead and paste Xform world space, all keys, and this should give us exact animation that we had before. It has our tweak included as well, and we now have no animation on that world control and everything is baked onto these world controls. So we can just go through and clean up this animation and not worry about the spaces that we had everything in before. It's probably two minutes work to get all of those world space controls not being influenced by anything else, just so that they make sense in the graph editor. Then you're not redoing work. You're cleaning things up once. You're cleaning things up in a way that makes sense. And yeah, this is how I work. And I hope this helped. Feel free to let me know in the comments or on Twitter if you have any further ideas on this or if you disagree, anything really, and subscribe for more. Because I haven't milked this short enough yet. Bye.